Well, this is not the original video I had planned for this week, but after wasting quite a bit of filament and hours over the course of a few days troubleshooting the Prusa Mini, I had to cover it. Regardless of the 3D printer that you own or that you end up purchasing, anyone that has been 3D printing for some time will tell you that you'll want to get familiar with it so that way you can troubleshoot it. And of course, it's really nice when you can just slice up a file, send it off to be printed, and it just turns out the way it should. But whether it's your first print, your 20th print, or if you're very, very lucky, your 100th print, eventually something is going to go wrong and you will again want to know some of the steps to take to be able to diagnose that issue. Some of the most common things are related to the bed not being leveled, not having proper adhesion, uh, maybe it is that your filament has moisture in it or uh, also clogs or a partial clog is something that you might run into, but then there are some sort of more obscure things that are not the norm but you'll at least want to be familiar with when you're checking over your printer. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through what happened with me printing on the Prusa Mini, the steps that I took, and ultimately what the solution ended up being. And my goal with this is just that, hopefully in the future, when you are troubleshooting your 3D printer, whether it's weeks, months, or years down the road, that this is maybe something in the back of your mind that you will check earlier on, and it will hopefully save you a lot of wasted time. And as you'll see soon here in this video, although again, this was with me printing on the Prusa Mini, there's no correlation to the hardware and it was actually something completely different. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So a little bit of background that led up to this point. A couple of months ago, I purchased a used Prusa Mini off of someone locally. He had three of them that he had used at one point and they had just been sitting for quite a long time and he said that they had not been used very heavily and from seeing them all sitting on the rack, they all did look like they were in pretty good condition and two of them were all black Prusa Minis and one was the black and the orange, which is the color scheme I wanted, so I went with that one. I did goof by not fully sort of going over the entire machine. I kind of just took his word for it and figured that hey, if there's anything small, I can figure it out. Well, when I got home, I saw that there was actually some overspray on the back of the machine that wasn't visible until you turned the machine all the way around and looked at it from that specific angle. But that overspray that appeared to be some kind of paint or filler was on some of the printed parts, it was on the smooth rods, and it was on the lead screw and the bed. I mean, it was kind of a light coat of it all over the printer. Initially, I did my best to just kind of wipe off the smooth rods and clean it up as good as I could using a little bit of IPA and then adding some lubricant or, or some oil to those smooth rods. But ultimately, I decided, nope, I'm going to completely disassemble the printer. I will reprint the parts, disassemble the printer, and reassemble it with the new parts to make sure I get everything nice and cleaned up correctly. So I started off by printing out all of the parts on the Prusa Mini and PTG, and it did a fantastic job of, of printing out all those parts. I had no issues at all. I rebuilt the machine with the uh, Super Pinda that I ordered because it had the older probe style. I ran the initial calibration, everything was good to go, and I was ready to rock and roll again. I am going to be building the Engravenator, which is a small open source uh, diode laser engraver. It's perfect for my small area because it's enclosed on the sides and on the top and it's got a carbon filter and doesn't take up a lot of space. So um, I started sourcing parts for that. And part of that is that it requires you to print out quite a few parts just in PLA. And so I started printing out those parts, everything was going great. And then I ran into some issues. The first was that I saw the uh, one of the trays of parts had shifted heavily in the y-axis, which was super easy to diagnose. I checked the y-axis belt, it was really loose. I added tension, it started slipping. So I replaced that with some Gates belts that I had left over from the Voron 0.1 build, and I went to print again. Well, about five hours into a six hour print, I look over and I, I see the printer air printing and I hear a little clicking sound like the extruder is trying to extrude filament and nothing is coming out. So I kill the print, clean everything off. I unload the filament to see if there's any sort of a um, issue on the end of the filament, like maybe it sort of blobbed up or there was inconsistencies on the extrusion. Everything checks out. I load it back into the machine. It extrudes perfectly fine, like there's not even a partial clog. I have no idea because I've, you know, I've been printing out batches of this same filament without issue, so I just go ahead and hit reprint. So around six hours later, I go to remove the printed parts. They seem like they're fine, but when I go to remove them, I see that there is what looks like a layer or two of pretty heavy under extrusion that is affected the whole parts. I mean, I was able to split the part in half. That's how bad it was. And 
It was in this moment that I realized that I had not printed with PLA on this machine prior to the rebuild. And I had seen and heard from my research prior to getting or considering a Prusa Mini that there were some people that had issues with things like heat creep. And so my mind instantly went to, oh man, is this the beginning of a heat creep issue of sorts? Because I hadn't had any issues with PTG, which made sense because it does have a slightly higher melting temp and it's less susceptible to something like uh, heat creep compared to PLA. So I instantly go to troubleshooting hardware. And I know again from the research I'd done and seeing over on my buddy uh, Chuck from Filament Friday's channel that when he got his Prusa Mini, he had some serious issues with PLA. It ended up being that the PTFE inside of the hot end was a bit too short and so he ended up replacing it. So I start off by removing the PTFE in my hot end. I do see that it is a bit charred. So thinking, cool, this, this could be it. Uh, I swap out the PTFE with a slightly longer tube. I go ahead and hit reprint. No marbles, the exact same thing. Then I go ahead and swap out the entire Bowden tube because I start thinking that, okay, it seems like it's in around the same spot. Maybe this is an issue with like tension on the Bowden tube. It's getting to this certain height, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but in the time I figured, okay, let's just swap out the entire Bowden tube, hit reprint, exact same thing. The last thing I did was take apart the extruder, clean out any of the, there was a little bit of filament uh, shards in there, but I still didn't think that was it, but I was sort of getting to a point here where I was like, I don't know what else it could be. I had already ordered a uh, Bontech heat break because from other people I had talked to, that was the recommendation that, hey, if your machine has some heat creep issues, swap out uh, with the Bontech heat break and it will, uh, it, it helped me, it'll probably help you with those issues. And so I went ahead, did the Bowden tube, did the Bowden tube in inside, swapped out the, or cleaned up the extruder, hit reprint one more time and same exact thing, the under extrusion in the, you know that same area. So in that moment, I was feeling a bit defeated. I had spent quite a bit of time. I had wasted filament. I really wanted to get this print over with so that way I can move on to the next thing. And I just started thinking that, you know, I'd printed out already three trays of this exact same PLA and it had performed beautifully. And all of a sudden now I'm having this issue and it seems like it's right around the same part. And what I ended up doing was I grabbed one of the failed prints out of the, out of the trash and matched it up with another one and saw, this is the exact same place. These parts are failing at the exact same place. And looking at this and the things I had changed, I didn't see what exactly could be causing it to fail at the exact same place and then recover at the exact same place. So I ended up taking the micro SD card, plugging it into my computer, double clicking on the G code file, which by default on my Mac, it opens it up in idea maker. And what do you know? There is a issue in the G code in the G code. There is a complete missing layer. So the machine wasn't having any issues or doing anything wrong. It was just following the set of instructions that were being fed to it. Now, I have no idea whether this was an error from Prusa Slicer just slicing this file incorrectly and forgetting to add a line of G code. I don't know whether it was a case of the micro SD card during the saving process getting corrupted. But one thing I did find interesting was that when I took that G code file, dragged it into Prusa Slicer, the same one that has the missing gap or the missing layer and has been printing incorrectly and you could see it in Idea Maker, I couldn't see it in Prusa Slicer. I scrubbed through all of the layers and every layer appears to be there and appears perfect. So I am very thankful that it did open in Idea Maker because otherwise I probably would have swapped out the heat break and never figured out what in the world was causing the issue with this particular print. Now, there was a point in time where I used to slice a file and I would always check the output, especially when I got into 3D printing initially. The first slicer I used was XYZ where, uh, and it more often than not output something that was not at all what I expected. So I got in the habit back then of checking all of my sliced files. And slicers have gotten a lot better over the years. And I think that I've sort of transitioned to, if it's a simple file, I hit slice, I throw it in, I hit print. The only times I really check is if I'm doing something funky like, um, I don't know, some sort of experimentation with a slicer, or if I'm adding supports, I'll usually still look just to make sure that the supports have generated uh, correctly. And I think that I have gotten a bit too confident with the slicer, you know, always outputting the correct thing. And I'm going to make a huge effort to take the extra 15 seconds and do a quick scrub of the sliced files and do maybe a quick pan to make sure everything does look correctly. And I certainly encourage you guys to do the same thing because I do think it's just good practice. 
Upgrading and modding 3D printers is a ton of fun and you can definitely add a lot of uh, quality improvements and reliability improvements by doing certain upgrades. But when things go wrong, sometimes it's best to just take a step back and go back to the basics. And the reason why I really wanted to make this video is I do get people that ask me, hey, can you show some of the failures you run into? Because in a lot of the videos, it's showing how to install something, showing how to do something. And I do run into plenty of weird things um, that don't always make it into a video, but I felt that this was a good one. And again, my goal is just whether it's to check your G code more often or whether it's just a, hey, take a step back and try some of these simpler things before doing hardware swaps. I really think that there is something that can be, you know, learned from this experience. Let me know from you guys. I would love to know how many of you have ever sliced up a file and ended up experiencing something weird. In my searches after, I did find quite a few people that printed something and there was like an artifact, a random extrusion that was showing up in the air somewhere, just weird things going on. So I love to know if you have any sort of weird rogue G code stories. Let me know in the comments down below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Oddbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.